breakdown! We have the illegal immigrant known as Senor Guapo, the psychopathic bitch Kristen, and the guy who's gonna get his nuts chopped off for saying such things, Monoxide! In the top ten, WrestleMania! I feel like you almost blew out my headphone. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it's another episode of Squared Circle Breakdown. Brought to you by Daddy Trump. Remember, why am we're I making a America gr- bitch or whatever it is you just said? <laughs> I don't know. I had to come up with a nickname for you since you just want to go by Kristen. And it's That's like, true. I am the only one on most podcasts that don't have a nickname. So never have. I've never had a nickname. So there you go. You, I gave you something, I, and, and work with it. Go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> I don't just, want to be just the go with it, Chris. Just go with but it. But just go with it. You don't. Come on. If you 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 don't realize the potential of money that you can make off of that. Anyway, Being a psychotic bitch. Well, I mean, how many psychotic bitches are out there that are really a lot? Well, there I'm talking a lot of psychotic bitches out yeah, there. Yeah, but they're they're not acting. They really no. are psychotic bitches. At least you'd be putting on a front a character, so that way. You can add a little bit of a tweak to it and make it monoxide, even more. Monoxide. Have you actually met Kristen? Many Shut times. Shut the fuck up, Guapo. <laughs> Many times. And I've, I've felt the wrath of her fist to my arm. Yes. Um, and some, uh, what I would say, dairy products to my head as well. We won't get into that, though. So, <laughs> anyways. Top ten. Favorite WrestleMania since WrestleMania season is right around the corner. As we are recording this, it is March 29, 2018, but you will be seeing this at a later date. WrestleMania is drawing near and near. We are literally a week and a half away from the grandest stage of them all, Roman Mania. Oh, uh, that I can wait for. Just anyway. saying, is anybody else walking out if they are actually Hell the main no! Event? I'm going to be that asshole that's like, come on! It's his yard now! In fact, you know that, that um, Matt Hardy, yes, the looking Matt Hardy, has a new shirt. And it's him on a lawnmower. And I said to myself, that should be a sign that he will mow Roman Reigns' yard after Roman has claimed it at WrestleMania. It's perfect. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, top ten WrestleManias of all time, according to us lads. Except one of us here has only got eight on their list. I feel yep. so much longer than that. I only have eight WrestleManias that I've seen. Exactly. Oh my so my list is going to be essentially a... How I feel about WrestleMania. So let, let, let me ask you something. You have the WWE Network, right? Yes. You have the WWE Network. You have a whole library of stuff. You have not, since the time you've gotten it, gone back to watch some of the old school stuff. Especially with your boy Shawn Michaels, who stole the show on some of those WrestleManias. I just, if I know what's going to happen, it's really hard for me to watch. Which is why I try and avoid spoilers. Well, you don't. Look at spoilers. You go into the show just like, okay, here's WrestleMania 11. The only thing I know is that Shawn Michaels and Diesel fight for the title, and Lawrence Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow are the celebrity match. That's really all you need to know. I don't know any of the story behind it. Or well, anything. that's why they have little video packages right before that. <laughs> so it goes hand in hand. But anyways. Okay. Uh, these are the top ten favorite WrestleManias. Not everyone's going to agree. This is just personal preference. I know a lot of people are not going to agree with mine. Mine is probably going to be one of the more unique lists. So, just... uh, I would disagree considering I have from 25 forward. But uh, we've already put the disclaimer up. Uh, yes. I mean, you, you may be older than us physically, but in wrestling years we've got you trumped. Daddy I was about Trump. To say, yes, by ten true. years. In wrestling years, I'm like I'm like a, a child. Pretty much. A very small child. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so 
if anybody is watching this, all two of you, uh, go ahead, <laughs> tell us your favorite WrestleManias of all time, top ten. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to go to www.unpopularunion.com where you can see all sorts of video editing people such as Cinematic Venom, Cinematic Excrement, and others. So, Senior Guapo, you're usually yes, the senior. first one that goes first, so we will introduce our ten and nines, and then once we get to eight, the psychotic one over there can jump in. So I like may... this idea. All right, so you may go first on your favorite <clears throat> ten favorite WrestleMania. All right, on my top ten, my number ten favorite WrestleMania is WrestleMania Uno. Number one, the show that started it all, where we, the main event, we got to see Hulk Hogan and Mr. T with Jimmy Snuka defeat Paul Ordendorf and Roddy Piper and Cowboy Bob Orton. It was great. It was great. Honestly, if you rewatch the whole thing, it was kind of shit, but it's the, <laughs> it's, it's the start Mania. It's the very first WrestleMania ever to come to fruition out of the brainchild that was Vincent Kennedy McMahon. That's all I got. Yes, that was the show that Vince McMahon gambled his whole company on, and if it didn't succeed, everybody was going to be looking for jobs. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is my number 10, and I guarantee you a lot of eyeballs are going to be popped out. Because they're going to wonder why the fuck it's in this place. My number 10 favorite WrestleMania is WrestleMania 17. Usually, oh. Yeah, usually this is number one for people. Like, this is the grand WrestleMania. This is the one that was headlined by Steve Austin. Going against the defending WWF champion at the time, The Rock. This show was held, I believe, six days after the actual folding of WCW, am I correct? Um, this was a good WrestleMania. I'm not going to take that away from it. You had TLC2. You had uh, Kurt Angle versus the guy that we can't name for obvious reasons. Uh, Undertaker and Triple H had a very fine little match. Uh, but I think what kills this... Oh, and Shane and Vince had a good street fight. What kills this mania for me is the very tail end of it, because it kind of killed not just the Attitude Era, but would start off a very slow decline of the WWE when it came to popularity. And that was Steve Austin and Vince McMahon aligning. I was, let's see, what was this, April 1st of 2001? Yes, it was April 1st, 2001. I would have been just Eight days shy of my 12th birthday when the show happened. And I was very upset because I was a huge Steve Austin fan. But I wasn't even upset, like even as a 12-year-old, at the idea that Steve Austin became bad. I became upset at the idea of why, it, when he's the biggest name of the company, would you turn the guy bad? Like it just didn't seem right. And even to Stone Cold's uh, account... It was probably the worst thing he could have ever done. Granted, his heel run had some very funny moments, but then again, Austin is just a great, great character, and he's great at talking. But, to me, that really dampened my mood on the whole show, and some people don't agree with me on this. That's fine. I can understand. But sometimes, the very end of the show can really affect your overall enjoyment if it's not good. Case in point, WrestleMania 25. Um, so, yeah, that's that's all I really got to say. 17 was a great show. That's why it's on my top 10. I can't really disregard it because it's got a lot of good stuff. TLC 2, like I said, awesome shit. Austin and Rock, awesome shit. But I just don't like it as much as everybody else does, and it's mainly because of that ending. Understandable. Uh, so since I only have... Eight, well, hold up, hold up. Go ahead and. Okay, you were saying that. Never mind. Uh, I, since I only have eight, do you guys want to go ahead and do your number nine? Yes. And then that would be correct. I'll Chris. start up on eight. 
That's what I was saying earlier. Go right ahead, uh, Trump's enemy. Well, Senor Duapo, number tw- That's a that's nine. a loaded question because technically, because since I'm a woman, technically we're both Trump's enemy. I don't know. No, Trump would like you. You're a white woman, and he got forty five percent of the women vote or some shit like that. I think he would love you. That hurts my soul. No, he would not. <laughs> Moving on. Ah, oh, come on, man. All those women I really mean, wanted his I hand mean, up their pussies, man. What the fuck? I did not. One, I don't need that image in my head. Two, <laughs> I did not need to make this political. <laughs> hey, come on. We, we're here to have fun. That's okay. That's okay. I didn't need to sleep tonight or anything. <laughs> uh, that's why my we have fun. Nine. That's why we have fun on this show. Come on, Daddy, where are you? Anyways, go ahead. My number nine is WrestleMania 12. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is the WrestleMania that we had the 60-minute Iron Man match between Shawn Michaels and Bret the Hitman Hart for the w- then WWF World Heavyweight Championship match. Uh, the whole is show this, itself. Is this the Boyhood Dream match? Um, yes, I believe so. Shawn Michaels yeah. achieves his Boyhood Dream of becoming the Boyhood Dream has done. come true. Yes, See, I know things. This is correct. This is also the uh, the uh, the the mania of Iron Man matches. <clears throat> Yes, and it's also the mania where we saw The Undertaker versus Diesel. Ultimate Warrior versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And Stone Cold Steve Austin. But not just Stone Cold Steve Austin, but Stunning Steve Austin versus Salvio Vega. Don't you mean the Ringmaster? Yes, the Ringmaster. Okay. That's a- you can, yes, the right. ringmaster is a whole different person than than Steve Austin. They're they're two different people. I'm I'm just letting you know, just like Diesel and Kevin Nash are two different people. <clears throat> my my timeline in my head's uh, messed up because of the medicine I'm taking. Uh, <laughs> and we also had a uh, British Bulldog Owen Hart and Vader uh, against uh, who's that? Ahmed Johnson, Jake Roberts, and Yokozuna. So this whole the whole card was actually really good and talented. Uh, this is one I can watch back again uh, right now and be and be happy with watching the whole thing, especially the Sean versus Brett match because they took up that whole sixty minutes and it was fucking awesome. Did you mention Roddy Piper and Goldust? Uh, no, I skipped that one. Oh, come on. That was the greatest part of the whole show. When they did the, the OJ Yeah, the OJ Hollywood chase. Football. That was great. Oh, God. And then Goldust got stripped down. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Roddy Piper and Goldust also. Okay. Yep, that's my number nine. My number nine. There's another one that will shock people. Don't worry, the rest of the list will not be shocking, but this will shock people of how low it is. My number nine is WrestleMania 3, which is oh. three for, mm. for people who speak uh, only English. That's right. That's right. Go over that wall. Um, three <laughs> was before I was born, so I don't have the sentimental value to it. That everybody else has. This was 87, so I wasn't born for another two years. But um, as somebody who wanted to go back and watch all the WrestleManias, the only ones I have not watched are 6 and 7. Those are the only ones I have not watched in full. Um, but with this WrestleMania number 3, I was questionable, or excuse me, quizzical about it, because again, it was before I was born, and... Obviously, being spoiled during the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era, was I going to enjoy this as much as everybody else? And to my surprise, it was a show that flowed very, very, very well. Um, A lot of heels went over, like uh, Hercules busting open Billy Jack Haynes, uh, King Kong Bundy uh, laying out, I don't know what the politically correct term is, I think it's little people. 
uh, poor little Haiti kid and little beaver uh, having to feel the wrath of King Kong Bundy. Uh, then you had uh, Roddy Piper's retirement match. This was going to be his retirement match. He wasn't really retiring. He was just going off to have his movie career against the adorable Adrian Adonis. Uh, this was absolutely like crazy because the crowd was super into Roddy Piper and uh, more. Uh, Roddy Piper is just awesome. So uh, it, this was it was not a technically sound match, but it was definitely fun. Uh, then you had the Hearts with Dangerous Danny Davis, who was the referee that went crooked heel against the Bulldogs and uh, Dynam. Yeah, the Bulldogs and Tito Santana. Uh, but I think everybody remembers this show. Well, before I get to that, Jake Roberts and Honky Tonk Man had an entertaining match because they were able to get, acquire Alice Cooper to throw the snake onto Jimmy Mouth of the South Heart, the colonel of the Honky Tonk Man. But um, everybody remembers this show for the match stealer, the IC title match of the decade, probably the IC title match since Vince McMahon Jr. took over. Uh, match, Macho Man Randy Savage defending the Intercontinental title against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. This is an excellent match. It's probably the best WrestleMania match of the 80s. Uh, it, yeah, I would say it's the best WrestleMania match of the 80s. And, uh, it pretty much inspired a lot of the wrestling that you're seeing now. The whole fast-paced and just the near falls and everything. This definitely defined it, even though they probably weren't the originators. But in WWE or WWF, that was rare. But, I know I'm not mentioning every match on the card, I'm trying to mention the footnotes, but the main event, Hulk Hogan defends the WWF title against Andre the Giant. As somebody who wasn't there for the storyline, I was able to look back on clips, the whole Andre the Giant being undefeated for, what was it, 15 years, he gets a small little dinky trophy, Hulk Hogan gets a big trophy for being champion for, what was it at the time, three years? And it's so it built the animosity, and then Bobby Heaton converted Andre the Giant to go bad guy. And Andre wanted a WWF title match at WrestleMania because he felt like he was being slighted. The contract signing that they had, and this is coming from somebody who's not a Hulk Hogan fan. I don't like Hulk Hogan, and and it has nothing to do with the the choice of words that he was exposed of using three years ago. I'm just saying I never liked Hulk Hogan, but. He did a great job here. Andre did a great job here. They both did a great job here. This is not a technically sound match. It's probably bad if you don't know the story going into it. But goddamn, the crowd was hot for it. It's one of the most historically important matches ever. And, yeah, I can definitely put this in my list because that match did end the show on a good note. And the show flows very nice. It doesn't drag. That's the good thing about this show. So that's my number nine. Okay. Guapo, your number eight. No, 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 no. We go with your number eight. Oh, you Christmas. want to go with my number eight? So my Or do we go with mine? No, we'll go with mine. That's fine. Okay. My number eight is different than everybody else's number eight because my number eight is my least favorite WrestleMania that I've seen, <laughs> which right. is, since Steve brought it up, uh, WrestleMania 25. I remember, and it, what's weird is that it's the first WrestleMania that I ever saw live or pay-per-view, whatever. And I just, I, so, you know, it, it was exciting because it was the first one. But, like, looking back on it, I'm like, God, some of these matches are just awful. But uh, I will talk about the good matches that happened. Uh, a surprisingly very good match on there was uh, Chris Jericho versus the Legends uh, versus Jimmy Snuka, Ricky uh, the Dragon Steamboat, and Rowdy Piper with Ric Flair in their corner. Uh, he was supposed to fight Mickey Rourke. A bunch of shit happened. That didn't end up happening. But we ended up, once Jimmy Snuka and Rowdy Roddy Piper were kind of out of the match, Jericho and Steamboat had a great match. Like, Steamboat could still fucking go. Steamboat could still go like the younger guys on the roster. Um, what else did we have on here that was really good? We had, uh, we had the uh, first Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker match, which everybody likes, except for Steve for some reason. Except for Monoxide for some reason. 
And hold up, I just think it's overrated. I didn't say I didn't like it. <laughs> That's there's a difference, okay? Uh, we're here to have uh, positive. Uh, that's the same WrestleMania where CM Punk won the Money in the Bank uh, ladder match against uh, Christian, Finley, Kane, <laughs> Kofi Kingston, Mark Henry, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin. That was a really good match. I'm trying to talk about positive things because clearly there's one. There's a couple very negative things on this match, but you know. Wait, hold I don't on. I want to talk about this. Negative? You're not going to talk about the best, one of the best parts of the uh, of the whole thing. What would that be, Guapo? Uh, the first ever May Young uh special. Yeah, or, that's well, not what it was called. The you best fuck WrestleMania. Off. That's not what it was called. That's not what it was called. Fuck oh, off. I'm sorry, sorry. The the Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal, which a transgender yeah. woman won. Progressive. Very. I uh, I choose not to remember that match. How? That was amazing. I marked out. I think that that's the start of the transgender movement going forward. I think WWE uh, was yeah. onto something. Oh, WWE was onto something by having by having said San- sorry, Santina Morella <coughs> win. That's right. Yep. That uh, was- also, she's you know, a very the nice man- lady. While we were uh, while we were talking about matches that ended the show on a sour note, uh, that was Triple H versus Randy Orton, which in its defense had a very good build up. It had an excellent build up, made me really excited for the match, and then the match was just, you know, there was no back and forth, there was nothing, there was just Triple H beating the shit out of Randy Orton, which I guess after the end of all this he. Attacked Mr. McMahon. He had attacked Triple H's wife. That's kind of what the crowd wanted. Uh, he did this whole thing where, like, they couldn't fire him because he was the uh, Royal Rumble. Uh, they couldn't fire Randy Orton because he was the Royal Rumble winner at the time. He would sue the company, you know. So it had a really great storyline. And then the match, though it was sort of what everybody wanted, it wasn't. At the same time, because we did want to see Randy Orton get the shit kicked out of him. But, you know, we didn't want to see him look like he was fucking nothing. This is the man that beat 30 other men to win the Royal Rumble. And he was tossed around like a rag doll. And his and uh, he had Ted DiBiase Jr. and Cody Rhodes with him. Triple H beat the shit out of them, too. It was a match that Deidre and I left early. We were like, if we leave right now, we could get to our car before traffic's really bad. Yep. That's about right. So, you know, it was, I would say it was an average pay-per-view that was brought down even further by its ending. (laughs) But there were stuff, there were things I liked on it. Like I said, there were some really good matches on it, but... Not enough that it's not my least favorite WrestleMania. That's right. <coughs> Anyways, yeah. Guapo. Now you guys can do your number okay. eight. Okay. Main my number eight is not only my number eight, but it's also the very first Mania I ever watched, and that was WrestleMania sixteen. That's right, WrestleMania two thousand. Is it called WrestleMania 2000? Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. It was never Why? called 16, because it was in the so, year 2000. Okay. Yes. That's weird. Anyways. Well, if you you want weird, <laughs> technically WrestleMania 14 was called WrestleMania X-Rated. Yep, technically, yes. That's dumb. Anyways, go on, go on. Um, yes, my uh, number 16 is WrestleMania 2000. Uh... This is the very first WrestleMania I ever watched. I watched the, all the build-up to this mania. Uh, I mean, for the first match, it was Big Boss Man and uh, Bull Bunchin uh, against the Godfather oh, and D'Lo Brown. Buchanan. I can't read right now. Uh, against Godfather, D'Lo Brown. Then we had Hardcore Holly against his nephew, Crash Holly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought it was his cousin. Cousin, nephew, isn't it the same thing in Alabama? 
Uh, yeah, brother and si- uh, your mother and sister being the same person. I don't know. Yep, something like that. I don't know if it's an Alabama thing. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, then we had a tag team match with TNA, Albert and Tess <laughs> against. Head Cheese, Al Snow, and Steve Blackman. Oh, that was a great team. I love that team. Uh, right? <laughs> everybody wants head. Does everybody need? Oh, God, yes. I love Al Snow. Uh, <laughs> and Steve Edge Blackman. Christian, Edge and Christian against the Dudleys and the Hardys for the uh, WWF Tag Team titles in a ladder match. Uh, then we had Terry Runnels against the Cat. Who the fuck was the Cat? I don't even remember her. Oh, uh, that Just was Jerry Cat. Lawler's wife. Uh, Jerry uh, Lawler's Stacey, wife. Stacy Carter. Yeah, she was known as Miss Kitty for a bit, and then she became then the she, Cat. And then she grew up and became the Cat. Uh, well, she grew up. When... She grew up being with China. That's where she got the Cat moniker. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, and the match was a cat fight. With oh, Val, the puns. With, Val, oh. with Val Venus as a special guest referee. Oh, God. Of course. Of course. Uh, then we had uh, a six person intergender tag match with China and Too Cool versus uh, the Radi- Radicals, Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, and Perry Saturn. Okay. Oh, this was when Perry Saturn was dressing up like a woman. That's right. I was about to say, where's the? Is China the only intergender part of this intergender? No, it would be <laughs> Perry Saturn. Perry Saturn, because it, just it would only be like, Perry Saturn. Uh, no offense to China, God bless her soul. She was great, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, we had a two out of three falls, uh, two out of three falls triple threat match for the WWF Intercontinental and European Championships. What? Uh, yeah, that was. I like his, that this is. That I like that. that this is your number eight, and you're like, what the fuck is okay. this? Okay, so uh, I, 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 I'm gonna have to educate you. Kurt Angle at the time was both European and Intercontinental Champion, and both titles were up for grabs in a triple threat match. To which gotcha. the first fall was for the European title. Chris Benoit won it, and Correct. the second time Chris Jericho won the Intercontinental title. But the interesting thing so is, it was... here's the interesting thing: okay. Kurt Angle was never pinned for either title. So. <laughs> Wait, so what if Okay. So so it's a triple threat match, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, and, and uh Kurt, and Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. Uh Chris Benoit won the first title, right? Yeah, the won European the IC title. title. If No, he won the IC title. Oh, the IC title, whatever, same shit. He won, the, he won one of the titles. If Jericho pinned him, wouldn't he then win the title that he won? No, because the other title would be up for grabs. No longer the first title. So in other words, so, so it's no longer. So it's a two title title match. But whoever gets the first pin, that get, you're just champion. Well, the, it's if, no longer for that title anymore. If you get all right, the first pinfall was for the intercontinental title. So Chris Benoit won. That means he's the champion. That's, that's it. That's already. No, yeah. So, I find that matches that we have to have this level of discussion about the rules of the match mm-hmm. are never very good matches. Well, keep in mind, this was the only time I think it ever happened, and it hasn't happened yes. since, so that should tell you something. And the next match was Kane and Rikishi against DX, uh, Road Dog and X-Pac. And the main event, which is the reason why this is my number eight. Eight? <laughs> Uh, Triple H against The Rock, against McFoley, against Big Show, with all of the big bands in each other in each person's corner. The it was a fatal four way elimination match for the WWF Championship, in which, of course, good old Trips retained his title. I was rooting so hard for The Rock for this whole match. And he let me down. Let me down. He let the people down. He had Mr. McMahon in his corner, and he still couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's a good good match. Apparently there was also a hardcore 
Championship Battle Royal. Oh title? yeah, I think this was the the show where Hardcore Holly called Michael Cole a shithead. Yes. Yes, that's right. He called him a shithead. In the, thing, the, the things, the things, the things the yes. hardcore Holly, uh, one by last defeating Crash Holly. That's what it was. Okay, I was like, why is that? I don't remember that match. You don't but remember anything on the pay per view that made your top ten. And well, you know. Okay. I, I was a child at this point. He remembers the feelings. Oh, uh, this is why Trump won. Event. Just letting you know. I remember feelings. the main event uh, completely. <laughs> uh, but. First person uh, Taz pinned by pinned Crash Holly after a capture suplex. Uh, yeah, whole bunch of bullshit. <laughs> the fuck? It was just ba- basically the title changing hands multiple times in one night. Yeah, that was the gimmick of the title. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's my number eight. My number eight. Shockingly. <coughs> is the first ever WrestleMania that I ever attended. WrestleMania 26. I sat with somebody in this room that is... Me! ...in this podcast. Yes, and your friend D. Uh, this was the first ever WrestleMania I ever went to. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. This was the first WrestleMania I ever met you guys. Um, I remember in the lead-up to it, you probably don't remember this because your memory. Not Guapo. No, not Guapo. You probably don't remember this because your memory's shot. But I remember shortly after twenty-five, you would uh, make references to what was going to happen at twenty-six as far as just us hanging out, just like making some sort of like predictions. And at the time, I was very hesitant, but I didn't say anything because it was like, eh, what do I tell him? Because I'm afraid to fly. Blah blah blah. I said, fuck it. I'm going to fly. I don't give a fuck. I don't care that 9-11 was years ago. I'm no longer afraid of that shit anymore. It's, it's, it is what it is. So, <clears throat> we all bought tickets at different times. So I ended up sitting with you, you and Deidre for this event. And in the lead up, there was not a harsh uh, debate between you and I, but you had your favorite... Shawn Michaels. I had my favorite. The I remember all of this. Okay, you do remember that. You act like I wouldn't. Re- I do remember all of this. Okay. You're, you're telling me the story like I wasn't there. Uh, well, I'm telling the people that weren't there. Okay. So they weren't there to know this. So, anyways, yes, you and I had the. Uh, you had the your favorite. The end of the story is I cried when Shawn Michaels was retired. Well, that's I- what I'm ruining the story for him because I don't want to give him the satisfaction. I actually wasn't going to get to that. I was actually just going to get to the card. But... Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> well, you, uh, you left so out one part. Shit. You left out one part. You are, you are so full of shit. Oh, yes, and he sat and laughed at me. And yes! I was like, yes! yes. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yes, it was wonderful. Yeah. I was sad that Shawn Michaels was leaving. So anyways, let's get I'd started. only just started loving Shawn Michaels and he got taken away from me. Yeah, yeah, poor thing. Huh. Anyways, so we get to the show. It was breathtaking to be at my first ever WrestleMania. Um, this was in Phoenix, Arizona. I remember somebody in front of me, who I guess was from Phoenix because he was wearing a Cardinals uh, hat. He kept asking me about who I thought was going to win, blah, 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 blah. We get to the show, and the first half of the show is just okay. Um, the tag team title match was very quick. Randy Orton was a huge baby face, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, Jack Swagger winning Money in the Bank was such a shocker. Okay, I have a funny story about Sheamus and Triple H. So... <clears throat> While, right before this match, I decided to get some food. To anybody who doesn't know, I have a fast metabolism, so if I don't eat, I get either really cranky or my body just completely shuts down. So I have to have food. So I went to go get pizza, but the problem was, I can't remember if it was one of their ovens wasn't working or something. It took a long time for this to come out, so I actually missed Sheamus and Triple H. I mean, they were showing videos of it, but I didn't really get to see it. And I come back, 
and, they, and it's one of those little small Papa John's pizzas. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I didn't get to see this, and I apparently didn't miss much. Uh, Punk and Mysterio was great for the short time it had, and <laughs> we got the pleasure of Bret Hart and Mr. McMahon going 11 minutes! A, a guy who had a stroke and a guy who at this time was 65 we're going 11 minutes with. Um, I actually, at this point, was like, this is WrestleMania? Really? But it was the three matches that I'm about to say that really like brought the show up for me. Um, not a lot of people thought that Chris Jericho and Edge for the title was good. I thought it was fine. It was a fine little match. I enjoyed it. That was a good match. How could Chris Jericho and Edge not be good? Well, no, I think people thought they they expected better, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. They, they thought they were going to like really tear the house down. They really didn't. Um, Cena and Batista, I don't give a fuck what anybody says about either of these two guys. They did a great job. This was the second best match of the night. Um, as I said in uh, the top ten heel Was runs, that the... Was this the, uh, was this, no, that wasn't the one where he taped Batista's leg no, so this he was couldn't not. get up. That was the last man standing. Yeah, that was a couple months later. This was just a regular singles match for the title. Um, this, as I said in my top ten heel runs, Batista was one of my favorite heels. He was so excellent here. I was actually rooting for Batista here. Uh, but he did not win, and it was expected. Uh, so, but Cena did a great job. Batista did a great job. They had a very fun match. And, of course, the elephant in the room, Undertaker Shawn Michaels. As much as I picked on this one over here for having to see her favorites go, I am a big Shawn Michaels fan. One of my favorites. I would say Shawn Michaels is my second favorite wrestler of all time, but he is outdone by The Undertaker. The Undertaker is just one of those mythical figures you're never, ever going to see in wrestling again. And... Even as a child, he captivated me. He was one of those characters that you would just escape reality and think, yeah, he's a, a real dead man or a real mortician. And Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Had, you know, uh, since we're talking about WrestleManias and stuff, and clearly I think maybe the dead man's coming back to face John Cena. I don't know if that storyline's actually, like, coming to fruition or if WWE's just, like, fucking with us. Uh, on a side note, I would secretly love for The Undertaker to come back just to tell John Cena no, and then leave, and then John <laughs> Cena just still doesn't have a match at WrestleMania. I could just imagine the I face. Would, oh, that would be great. I would, I would giggle a little inside. But anyways, my my uh, my meanness aside, say say Undertaker had lost at this match, and say this was like Undertaker's last match. Would this be a much better last match? For Undertaker than the one against Roman Reigns. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by far. By far. Like, I thought you were going to go with uh, Brock Lesnar because of the streak, but, um, yeah. If no, you're going I, Roman... would even t- I would even say that would have been a much better match that, than the one with Roman Reigns. Because well. then... Well, one, if you're going to do... The, nobody was happy about the Brock Lesnar beating... under. Not a lot of people were happy about the Brock Lesnar beating <laughs> Undertaker thing. But if you're going to do that, if that's the storyline you're going to go with, then have Brock Lesnar, like, that's that's the last we see of the Undertaker. Brock Lesnar defeat... Not just ended the streak. Defeated the Undertaker we've not heard from the dead man since. Uh, I think that would have been a much better ending than that. Well, I probably... Because it was just a big slugfest, but, you know, that's for a different video. I would not have really... I mean, it's it's Shawn Michaels, so there will, there will be bias, but I wouldn't have thought Shawn Michaels would have been the right guy to end the streak. I was a firm No, belief. I don't think he was either, but I'm just saying was, based on the matches. I was on firm belief that if the streak was to end, you should end it with somebody who... It's going to be with your company for 15 years. You know that, and you can trust them, and you want them to be a top guy. But all that aside. I probably would have had Bray Wyatt do it. Well, just, every, just because that's the character. You're giving Bray Wyatt essentially the same sort of gimmick as The Undertaker, the the, the mythos and all of that kind of stuff, the creepiness that's behind him and everything, the eater of worlds kind of thing. And... You know, that would have given him a lot more uh, 
malice isn't the right word. A lot more. No. Uh, um, you know who should get? He, he would have had an order to him. You know who should have got it? Matt Hardy. No, Fandango. No. Fandango. Yes, Fandango. Yes. You mean so, the guy who beat Chris Jericho at WrestleMania? Yeah, Kenny Omega yeah. couldn't do it. He had to do it at Wrestle Kingdom. Fuck him. Well, well, speaking speaking of that, if uh, if if Steve if Monoxide is done with the uh, well, no, I actually wasn't. 26, I wasn't. Go done. ahead, go ahead. I was going to say that I this is my favorite <laughs> match of WrestleMania history. First off, um, <coughs> Shawn Michaels is one of my favorites. I was blessed to see him retire. Right in front of me. And he's kept his word. He's never come back to wrestling. Um, this was a match that I hold near and dear. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunately my number eight because I have other manias that I prefer over this. But this was definitely a moment for me to watch live. And I actually, um, despite rubbing it into her face that, yes, Undertaker did defeat uh, the Heartbreak Kid. Heartbreak Kid, seeing him go was obviously a sad thing. So uh, this is my number eight. Uh, so now we're at seven, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So uh, number seven for me is WrestleMania 29. Uh, there's a lot of bias on this one because it was fucking cold at WrestleMania 29. Oh, boy. Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember. That should not be as big of a bias as it is for me, but it was fucking cold at WrestleMania 29 in that open air arena. Yeah. You were expecting it to be say, warm. I was expecting it to not be like fucking 30 degrees out. Me and Gilbert warned cold. you. We warned you before you got here. We it was fucking cold. Yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Go ahead. Let's see, we had some uh, great matches like, uh, you know, the not once in a lifetime, the the second time in a lifetime. Well, hold up, hold John up. John Cena versus The Rock match. Technically, it was once in a lifetime because it was for the title. And if you want to get technical, you want to get really technical, Cena did not face The Rock, he faced the Scorpion King. There's oh, a difference. okay, is that it? <laughs> yes, there's a difference. Go ahead. Um, this match did have, uh, the Triple H versus Brock Lesnar match, which was all right. <laughs> Weren't we, like, talking throughout the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, go ahead. it had Undertaker versus CM Punk, which I did not see for really? stories, for reason. No, remember, Deidre took my seat. So then where were you? I was wandering around because her seat was fucking cold. Oh shit! And remember, she found the other side of the arena. Yeah, you missed the match of the night. Have you ever rewatched it? Yes, I've rewatched it. It was a very good match. It should have gotten more time, but yes, it was awesome. Uh, we had Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger right oh. when, right after he got busted for having weed, and I that's when I officially gave up on Jack Swagger because I'm like, you fucking idiot wwe is finally giving you this big push for the world heavyweight championship mm -hmm. i i'm just saying if i were jack swagger and i've been like climbing my way through the mid card and finally got up to world heavyweight championship match status i would fucking i would go after every show i would just go straight to my fucking room i'm like i'm not doing a damn thing to get in trouble and he got caught Smoking weed while driving uh, in Mississippi. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> I was going to win the world Jack title, but then I got high. Got high. Ooh. This was Jack Swagger at his absolute best with Zeb Coulter. Yeah. With I'll essentially the, the Donald time. Trump gimmick before Donald high. Trump made it a gimmick. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Team Hell No, Daniel Bryan and Kane versus Big E Langston, back when he had a last name, and Dolph Ziggler with AJ Lee. This is actually Big E's debut. Title. This is his debut match. Uh, we had Mark Henry and Ryback. Oh, that was beautiful. I love that match. <laughs> uh, we had The Shield versus <clears throat> Big Show, Randy Orton, and Sheamus. 
And then we had in the pre-show, which was probably the best match of the night, uh, Miz versus Wade Barrett for the Intercontinental title. Wait, did you mention Jericho and Fandango? Yes, oh, I that... forgot that one. Uh, how could you, you know, forget? How, how Jericho jump-started the great career of Fandango. And yet he had to... Uh win against AJ Styles. Yes, and then he beat AJ Styles. So Fandango should be WWE champion because he beat he the should. guy he that be, beat the guy who's the champion. A, he should be like a six time champion at this point. Uh, right? Pretty good Johnny is, Curtis. In fact, <clears throat> theoretically, Fandango is better than Steve Austin the Rock because he beat the guy that beat Austin and the Rock <laughs> in the same night. Oh my god. God, what a fucking great th- I'm, thing. I maybe did this list wrong, and I should have made 29 my least favorite. Because <laughs> <laughs> 25 at least had three matches. I'm like, that was actually a really good match. Uh, here we have CM Punk. And then a lot of, well, you know, Team Hell No was, I mean, I can't remember it. Uh, we have CM Punk and we have uh, uh, Wade Barrett and The Miz. Yep. But I've already made my list. So fuck every one of y'all. Anyways, is that it? That is it. Okay, go ahead, Guapo. <clears throat> my number seven is. WrestleMania 27. Wow. That is right. <laughs> wow. Yes. Um, uh, a, uh, a, what you call it, a mania where we saw Sheamus and, versus Daniel Bryan in a lumberjack match. Wait, when Wait, did you I, see that? It wasn't on TV. Yes, I know, but it was a dark match and you can see it on the WWE Network. <gasps> ah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and then you get to see Greg Kali epically destroying Sheamus. <laughs> awesome. At the end of it. Uh, then we get to have Edge versus Alberto Del Leo for the World Heavyweight Championship, which was a good match, except for the fact that the next night on Raw, uh, Edge had to surrender his title. Or it was a SmackDown. Uh, it was, I think it was the Raw, not the Raw after WrestleMania, it was the following. The second one? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I could be wrong. No, that's, that's, uh, uh it was, it was the Raw following, yes. Okay. Cause I have this one, clearly I have this one on my list, it's higher than this, but. Alright, go ahead. Then I have, uh, it's Cody Rhodes against Rey Mysterio, in that classic match. Uh, we have Big Show is an eight-man tag team match. Big Show, Kobe, St- Kobe Kingston, and Santino Morala versus the f- core, the core, Ezekiel Jackson, Heath Slater, Justin Gabriel, and Wade Barrett. And then we have Randy Orton against CM Punk, which was a great match. Uh, <coughs> Michael Cole. And Jack, with Jack Swagger against Jerry Lawler. And my god, Michael Cole won. What the fuck? Awesome. In his uh, Syracuse orange singlet. His UT and, orange singlet. Was it Syracuse? Syracuse. I thought he was a UT guy. Cole went to Syracuse. I did not know that. Yes. Uh, and... The thing that made this match amazing for me, uh, this card amazing for me, Undertaker versus Triple H in a no-holds-bar match. Dude, that was such a good match. Oh, it was a great match. The what... end of an era match? Yeah. No, no, that's 28. No, that was, that was the next one. But this, is that the next this, one? This is 27. This was, this was my favorite match between the two. Me too. I like that. I like that. Uh, it was the one where Triple we... H hit the tombstone and Undertaker kicked out. Correct. Uh, uh, yeah, he hit him on a tombstone on top of a uh, on top of one of the what you call it uh, steps. No, he didn't hey. do that. Wait, was it? 
No. no, he just did a tombstone. Was it? Yes. Yes, you're right. I'm thinking of, of a different one off the top of my head right now. Uh, and the next match, which I don't know why this was before Taker and Triple H, but, I mean, after tri- uh, Triple H and Taker, I guess to give people a piss break. Yep. Uh, John Morrison and Nicole Snooki, I don't, I can't pronounce her last name, and Trish Status. Snooki! Ziegler and Lake Layla and Michelle McCool with Vicky Guerrero. What the Where's fuck Snooki? is this? Where, where Snooki, Snooki wasn't that awful. Uh, she did like two moves. I know, but she, I know, but we expected her to be like awful. We expect we were expecting Jenna versus Charmel part two. Like I wanted was, that. You know, terrible. I wanted Jenna and Charmel part two. That would have been great. Honestly, I'm just. I'm saying, just... It was one of those that we had such low expectations for her that she did above that. We were like, "All right, I'll take it." Honestly, I'm just not 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 one of the best uh, celebrities. I would say the best celebrity uh, for <coughs> I don't think it was a WrestleMania. It was SummerSlam with Stephen Amell. Clearly, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was yeah. just happy that WWE has never put her into a video game or anything like that. So. Put Snooki. Uh, I wonder if you can make Snooki in the game. You can make uh, anybody. I'm, I'm sure it's there. Uh, I mean, you can you can download the Patriot. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Even better. And the main event of the evening, we have the Miz with Alex Riley against Big Match John Cena. Can I correct you on something? It's What's not. That? It's not the Miz. It's dumb Miz. Go ahead. Yeah. Dumb. No, nice. he wasn't doing. He wasn't doing dumb Miz. At it doesn't point. matter. He He's the, always. He was doing. I'm the Miz, and I'm Jesus. awesome. He had the He's, big inflatable awesome. It doesn't shit. matter. He's always dumb Miz to me. He always will be. Go ahead. Ah, this is on here uh, simply just because of that match. Uh, that and. Taker and uh, Triple H because the Miz can say he went to WrestleMania as the WWE champion and walked out still the champion against John Cena. And that is why he is the champion on Raw. That's right. Yes. Alright. Now for my number seven. It is our WrestleMania that's always on people's lists. It is the 10th annual WrestleMania, WrestleMania 10, held at Madison Square Garden on March 20th, 1994. Um, many people would call this a two-match two show. And they're right. Here's the thing, though. These two matches, arguably, amongst wrestling fans, would be five stars. There's a reason why that didn't make, my, didn't make the list for me. <laughs> well... A lot of people, it's very hard for a show to have two matches that are arguably five stars. I mean, we're talking perfect, near-perfect matches. You you may have a show that'll have a five-star match, and it could be a stinker of a show. But two? That's very rare. So, how do we get to this point? But I also think it's the story that was built throughout the night. Bret Hart lost to his younger brother Owen in the opener, and this was a fantastic opener. It's probably the best WrestleMania opener ever. Um, these two went out, had a technical clinic, it put Owen over, and the whole storyline was was that Brett, being the older brother, always got the spotlight, and Owen felt like he was in the shadow. It was the typical older brother, younger brother storyline. And Owen's bragging, he beat his brother Brett, blah, 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 blah. It was, it was fantastic. And we'll get to more of that later. Um, you had the Falls Count Anywhere match, which was very weird with Crush and Randy Savage, but Randy Savage did the best he could to make it work. Fortunately, it didn't. Um, you had an actual women's match in 1994 with Alundra Blaze defending the title against Lalani Kai, and it didn't really last that long. It was 3 minutes 20 seconds. Men on a Mission did not win the tag team titles from the Quebecers, which was kind of odd um, because Men on a Mission were very over as a face tag team at the time. Uh, one of the WWF title matches, yes, there were two of them, uh, Lex Luger going up against the defending champion Yokozuna, who had held the title since King of the Ring 1993 after beating Hulk Hogan for the belt. 
Uh, Luger and Bret Hart were both winners of the Royal Rumble, so they both got a match, uh, got a shot at the title. And so Lex Luger lost by DQ for, I think it was messing with Mr. Perfect. This was not a really good match. It was what it was. Uh, Earthquake squashed Adam Bomb, and the match that everybody holds as one of the greatest matches ever, Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels in the latter match for the Intercontinental title. This is a match, I guess you could say, topped. Uh, Ricky Steamboat, Randy Savage, that's up for debate. It really all depends on your personal taste. This is a great ladder match. Um, if you look at my video, it's, I think, number 24 of my top 25 favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. Only because it really doesn't hold up because most of the matches is spots. And obviously, there have been ladder matches since then that have over exceeded it. But you can look at it as this being the inspiration for all the ladder matches that were to come. So I can definitely understand why people would put this way up there. Because for the time, this was kick-ass. Um, Razor Ramon won this match, and it really didn't matter. And there's a funny story to this. They actually overexceeded their time. They were not supposed to go as long as they did. And they just went anyway because they felt like they were creating art out there and it bumped a, a match. I can't remember what the match was, but it, one of the matches that was supposed to be on the card got bumped because they over exceeded the time. And when they got to the back, Randy Savage chewed them the fuck out for o going over their time. Cause Randy Savage was so anal when it came to the time of your matches, you always have to be prepared. Now to get back to Bret Hart, he beats Yokozuna in the main event for the title. This was basically the Chris Benoit, the Daniel Bryan moment, but this time with Bret Hart. But here's where the storytelling really gets good. So Bret Hart has the belt. He beat Yokozuna. Lex Luger comes out, realizing he failed, but Bret succeeded. He gives him the handshake. Then Randy Savage comes out, and he's raising uh, Bret Hart's arm. Then everybody's coming out with one, two, three kids, Sparky Plug, uh, Tatanka. Vince McMahon comes out of the commentary table. Uh, the celebrities come out. They're all raising him up like a lot of the people are in the ring. They're just celebrating him. And then one familiar name comes out, and that's Owen. He comes out and walks up the ramp, and everyone's like, come on, Owen, come in. Congratulate your brother. And Owen's got this look on his face like, you motherfucker. This was my night. I beat you. You are taking my moment away. It was once again the older brother overshadowing the younger brother. And it built to their match at SummerSlam in the steel cage for the title. Which, if Owen would have won, that would have been fine. But he didn't. But this was classic storytelling. And probably some of the best storytelling at this time. And... Yeah, I thought not only did it have two five-star matches, it did an excellent job further prolonging the Bret Hart-Owen Hart feud. So, that's my number seven. That was right. a lot for number seven. Oh, hell yeah. <coughs> uh, so, six? Number six is what we're on? Yes. Yes. Uh, my number six, I did not watch uh, at first... Uh, when it came out, because I was watching it in protest. <laughs> I don't care what the fuck Spaz Phoenix says. I didn't watch it. I actually canceled my WWE network just to be like, you are not getting my $10. Oh, I thought month. you were going to say... I, I think I know which one thinking. you're talking about, but go ahead. I thought you were going to say Bound for Glory. No. Hashtag, I canceled my... Hashtag I Spaz bought Bound for Glory. Yep. Hashtag spaz bought Bound for Glory. Anyways, um, if you'd like to hear that story, go uh, on the Spaz Phoenix channel and you can <laughs> listen to me tell it several times. Okay, go ahead. Um, anyways, uh, WrestleMania 33. Because there was, you know, there were a few, one or two matches on the card, but nothing made me want to go, I need to watch this match. And then, of course, we had the infamous... Uh, the very infamous Roman Reigns versus Undertaker match that everybody was. I don't know that as many people were upset about this match as they were Undertaker losing to Brock Lesnar. I was more upset about Taker losing to Roman than I was about Lesnar. So was I, but I, I'm not speaking for everybody. Monoxide. Well, it, it's his yard now. I mean, I'm just <laughs> I saying. you're going to fucking go there. <laughs> you, you're only saying that because Vince McMahon told you to like it. No, Vince McMahon would never, ever suggest that I have to like Roman Reigns. 
I, I just naturally like the guy. He's a very naturally likable guy. But go ahead. Um, Are... there were a couple good things on this on this card. Yes. yes. <laughs> go ahead. We had uh, Seth Rollins defeat uh, Triple H, which was a great match. Yes, yes, it um, was. We did not have we did not have uh, Bray Wyatt defeating Randy Orton, which was no, stupid. No, we did not. Uh, we had Brock Lesnar defeating Goldberg for the <laughs> Universal Title, which is a title he still holds right now from from this match. Think about yep. it. He will have held the title for you know a res- a, a wrestling year. I don't know what day. Let me see when WrestleMania 30, what day WrestleMania 30 was. April 2nd? Yeah, he'll have held it for a year. I like it. So that means that title has been off a raw for an entire year. For the most part, yeah. Why do we have to Yeah, for the most part. Uh, the one one of the good things about this pay per view, though, we did see both women's titles uh, defended on this pay per view. We had Naomi in a six pack challenge, uh, winning the SmackDown Women's Title, and we had uh, Bailey keeping her women's title in a Fatal Four Way match. I don't know that those were necessarily great matches, but you know. It's always for me. I'm always happy to see the title actually be defended at WrestleMania because for so long it just wasn't. It the the women's title was not a high enough caliber title to make it onto WrestleMania. Uh, we had the heart. I'm the one that more the guys in the group will be more excited than I was. Yeah. And the Hardy Boys returning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ooh, uh, yeah. Uh, we had AJ Styles defeating Shane McMahon in a very good match. That was awesome. <laughs> match. Uh, let's see. Mojo Riley won the 33-man battle royal for the Andre the Giant uh, Memorial Battle Royale, which totally skyrocketed his career. I still don't understand that one, but okay. Uh, Dean Ambrose defeated, uh, retained his Intercontinental title against Baron Corbin in the pre-show, and Neville retained his, uh, Cruiserweight Championship against Austin Aries, which is, I think, the last big pay-per-view we saw Austin Aries in. Yes, and it didn't even make it onto the DVD. Easy. Which is sad, because that was a pretty good match. It, was, it yeah. was. I mean, it wasn't amazing, but, you know, it was a good match. <coughs> I understand yeah. why Austin Aries left. Because he can make more money in the indies? Fuck yeah. Well, definitely now. now that he and has that was WrestleMania money. 33, which I had to watch later, because I uh, did it out of protest. Okay. Yeah. After I canceled my WWE Network because of Roman Reigns. Yes, you totally canceled it. I did cancel it. Mm. Yes, you did. Fuck wink, you, wink. Guapo. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, number six, you guys. Yeah, Guapo. Number six. My number six was uh, Monoxide. Your number ten. WrestleMania 17. Damn. Okay. Uh, I feel like I all be... of my WrestleMania matches are negative. I'm going to try and be positive this next go around. Go positive. ahead. I really enjoyed it. It was the first ever Taker versus Triple H WrestleMania match. Uh, I, I enjoyed the heel turn of Stone Cold. But then again, I was just like a little kid watching this. Uh... <laughs> Um, other notable matches, uh, like you said earlier, Kurt Angle against, uh, he who shall not be named, uh, Kurt Angle, uh, Chris Jericho 
against William Regal, which actually was a really good match for the IC title. Uh, X. What the, what the hell is that? I'm looking at the Wikipedia. Uh, was broadcast into Sunday Night Heat. So this match was on Sunday Night Heat. X Factor, Just Incredible, and X Pac against Grandmaster Sexay and Steve Blackman. Alrighty. Probably found out in the network someplace. Uh, and Shane McMahon against his father. So yeah, this, uh, the you whole. You didn't mention that, Monoxide. What? Shane McMahon. McMahon. I did I did make a small mention, yeah. In a street fight with Mick Foley, a special guest ref- referee. Who better to have a referee your street fight than Mick Foley? And a TLC match with uh, Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, and uh, Dudley's. Alrighty. <laughs> My number six, this is a uh, debatable WrestleMania. This is one of those WrestleManias you either loved it or you hate it. I'm one of the few that, well, I'm of the mind that I loved it. WrestleMania 8. 8. Yeah, this was a very good WrestleMania for me. I've watched it many times (laughs) over. And this was in 1992. Yeah, April 5th, 1992 at the Hoosier Dome. Uh, This was originally supposed to be headlined by Hulk Hogan and the nature boy, Ric Flair, because Ric Flair had just come to the company a few months prior with the real world's heavyweight championship, claiming to be the real world's heavyweight champion. They were building towards this match, but for reasons that are debated amongst all people involved, whether it be because the houses didn't draw or Hogan and Ric Flair couldn't come to an agreement on the finish or they couldn't uh, formulate the match to make it work, whatever the case may be, it ended up being the two headlining matches of Ric Flair defending the WWF title against Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan, which would be his farewell match against... Sid Justice. Now, this is an interesting WrestleMania because there's a lot involved. Now, there's a lot of filler. I, I'm not going to lie. This is probably why people don't like it, but I'll get to that. This is the first ever WrestleMania that Shawn Michaels wrestled as a singles wrestler. Uh, he would defeat El Matador's Tito Santana in the opener with Sensational Sherry. Uh, this was also the second ever victory of The Undertaker at WrestleMania by defeating Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, This also has one of my favorite Intercontinental title matches of all time. Uh, Roddy Piper defending the title against Bret Hart, to which he lost. But this is an excellent match, and it showed Piper could work. uh, Because at that time, Piper was only known as a talker for the most part. Uh, We had an eight-man tag match, which the selling point of this was Ray Combs basically knocking on the heels of this match. Um, Then came... In the middle of the card, the WWF title match, which is one of my favorite title matches ever. Flair's criticized this match. I don't see why he should. This was an excellent, excellent, excellent match with great storytelling. Uh, One thing to note, both Ric Flair and Bret Hart bladed here. But Bret Hart did a better job of masking it than Ric Flair did. Because back at the time, they weren't allowed to blade. If you got busted open our way, you got busted open our way, okay, continue the match. But if you bladed, you got fined. And Bret, Bret Hart hit it better. And made it look like he got busted open the hard way. Flair, on the other hand, kind of like was in front of the camera going. <laughs> so it was a little more obvious on the Flair side. And Flair got chewed out. But um, the storyline going here was that Ric Flair apparently uh, was having a fling with Miss Elizabeth before she got with Randy Savage. And he had proof, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the case may be, this was a great title match. It's one of my favorite matches. I think, yeah, I put this in my top ten uh, favorite WrestleMania matches ever. This is where people may have reservations, because now the next three matches are filler. Rick Martell and Tatanka, Natural Disasters, winning by countout for the tag team titles against Money, Inc., and a a one-and-a-half-minute match with Owen Hart and Skinner. But the main event, Hogan and Sid, this goes back. I'm not a Hogan fan, but they did a good job getting the crowd into it. This was Hogan's hurrah. And the story going here backstage was that Papa Shango was apparently supposed to come out and stop the pin. But for whatever reason, he missed his cue. So when Hulk Hogan did the leg drop and did the pin, Sid had no choice but to kick out. Because Harvey Whippleman couldn't run in in time and stop it since Papa Shango didn't come out, blah, blah, blah. So Papa Shango does come out. They start beating on Hogan. And out comes the returning Ultimate Warrior who had been missing since SummerSlam of 91. 
He comes out, cleans house, so does Hogan, and they do a big pose down to celebrate. In my opinion, this is a great WrestleMania. P people have mixed opinions about it. There's some people who love it, some people who hate it. I love it because it's a really nice flowing WrestleMania with the Undertaker streak being historically important here, beating a big name in Jake Roberts, Shawn Michaels starting off his uh, Heartbreak Kid gimmick, Piper and Bret Hart stealing the show, Randy Savage and Ric Flair having the match of a lifetime, and the return of the Ultimate Warrior. I can't ask for anything else. This was this was great. I really wanted to put it in number five, but the one at number five, I have to leave it where it is. So this is number six. Okay. All right. It just needed a really <clears throat> big dramatic pause. Yes. Just to everybody uh, to absorb what makes, it. What makes a good... I don't... I don't know what y'all's criteria was. What made a good WrestleMania for me is something that I will remember back on, whether it be one match or a couple of matches. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. You were talking about a lot of people don't feel the same way you do about that one. Well, and I feel it's because you remember a lot of that stuff. If everybody has their own criteria of what they like, so it's really it really all depends on your own personal taste. Do you think it's got to be matches, moments, uh, the people involved? It really it's it depends on what m you like out of a WrestleMania or even a wrestling show for that matter. So, to me, eight had those criteria, and and those are involving wrestlers I'm not even huge fans of. So, uh, speaking of. Matt, WrestleManias I liked. We're now moving up into the WrestleManias I really liked. Uh, I, somebody talked about WrestleMania 27. I don't remember who talked about I think Guapo. it was me. Monoxide. Guapo. Uh, me. It was Guapo. Uh, you're, <clears throat> anyways, so I don't want to go too in detail about the match because uh, Guapo already talked about it. Yeah, we did have unfortunate things like Colt, Michael Cole versus Jerry Lawler. But, you know, it was... Not every match needs to be super serious. It was just a little silly match. Uh, I really liked Miz versus John Cena, even though, like, all the rock bullshit was happening at the time. And I'll tell you why. I remember a video package right before their match. Oh, I know where you're going. Uh, for the Miz. And it had a, what song? Oh, uh, Hate Me Now from called? Nas. Hate me now, yeah. And it was such a perfect uh, song for Midge, Miz's video package. It's, I mean, we can bitch about a lot of things about WWE. I think all three of us can agree that WWE does well almost 100% of the time our video <clears throat> package is to make you yes. get hyped about a match. Even a match you don't care about. A video package can like bring you into it just for a minute. The video package they did for The Miz was like, where the fuck has this Miz been? That Miz is awesome. Legitimately. Uh, I still liked the match. Um, Miz got his WrestleMania moment. I feel like he's higher up in the card than he's presenting himself right now. Um, and this is back in the time when I wasn't a real big believer of The Miz. I was like, you know, he's fun and whatever, but... I mostly ragged on him because to to be the opposite of Monoxide to bother him. Wait, uh, the Triple H match, you mean? No, I mean the Miz. Oh, okay. You were a huge Miz fan, and Still I would am. just dog on him and just to like mess with you. Yeah, and I would just call you know. Miz the the greatest thing ever. So it's it, it we both we both ragged on each other when it came to the Miz. So. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I like the Cody Rhodes Rey Mysterio match. Uh, I thought the Edge, uh, Alberto Del Rio match was great. It was, it sucked because then he retired the next night. But if you're going to have a last match, why not have it at WrestleMania? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Like, I, I just, I, even though there's not one match that I'm like, oh, I fucking love this match. The Undertaker Triple H match was really good. I just had good feelings about this WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Anyways, like I said, I don't want to go too far into it because because uh, Guapo already talked about it a lot. <clears throat> a decent amount. Okay. Your number five. Mm-hmm. My number five is like your number nine there, Steve. WrestleMania three. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was one of the first classic uh, manias I ever watched back. My dad actually had a old VHS of it, which I watched when I was younger. And uh, yeah, uh, it's one of the one of the better manias I think I've ever seen. Uh, it's one of the older classic ones that I definitely can go back and watch because of that uh, Ricky Steamboat and Macho Man match, and also of course the uh, Hulk Hogan Andre Giant. It was a uh, uh, very classic, and it, it it really started me as a younger kid getting into wrestling. And this is that's why that's why this one holds significant to me at least a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going super into it because you already have. So. Okay. Uh, my number five. It's ironic because I'm looking at the uh, Wikipedia page for this mania. And this WrestleMania, just like the current one that's coming up, was sponsored by Snickers. Um, And it was also held in Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania 20. I was torn between this and 8 because I kind of hold them in the same regard. But I had to think about it. And at the time, I was a big John Cena fan. I was a big fan of the Doctor of Thugonomics, and him winning his first title against the Big Show for the United States title was absolutely uh, captivating. Uh, I didn't really care about the Fatal 4-Way tag team match, but Chris Jericho and Christian had probably one of the more underrated matches in WrestleMania history. Nobody really talks about this one, but it was uh, definitely very good. The culmination of Trish turning heel as well, and Trish... In my opinion, other than Alexa Bliss currently being one of the best female heels at that point. Um, the Rock and Sock Connection versus Evolution. The stuff that Ric Flair and The Rock did together was so freaking hilarious. There's one part where um, I think Mick Foley's on the floor and somebody tags in Ric Flair. And you can clearly hear Ric Flair clear as day as he's grabbing Mick Foley's leg screaming, I don't think so, motherfucker! It's... That I can watch like ten times a day. Um, the Playboy Evening Gown match, who cares? The Cruiserweight title match, eh? It was was, but this is where many people hate this match, but I love it for the wrong reasons. Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. I love watching <laughs> the crowd take over this match. Oh my god, they ripped these two a new asshole. And it was great. And with Steve Austin as a referee, it just added to the atmosphere. This was just super fucking funny. Um, the There was another WWE tag team match. This was the WWE tag team match, which uh, Too Cool had won. And it's strange because Rikishi left shortly after that. And uh, this, I remember this match more than most people. Molly Holly and Victoria for the women's title. Uh, I, I believe the story behind the scenes is is that Molly Holly actually pitched this idea for her hair. Oh, it was actually a hair versus title match, which was if Molly won, she won the title. If Victoria won and retained her title, then Molly Holly had to shave her head. I think Molly's the one that came up with this idea behind the scenes because she wanted to do anything to get on the card, and she felt like this would be a great way to pitch the to creative to get her on the card, and they said yes. So she had the match, lost, got her head shaved. Became like Serena Deep. Except Serena Deep voluntarily got her hair shaved. Um, the WWE title match, Eddie Guerrero defends against Kurt Angle. This was absolutely fantastic. Some people forget about this match because of the main event, but this these two tore the house down. This, this, was, this was absolutely great stuff. Um, Kane and Undertaker, the, the return of the Dead Man character. I had been waiting for the return of the Dead Man character since the Rumble. They really waited until WrestleMania to bring him back, and he finally did come back, and it was just so... And not only did he come back, Paul Bearer came back to really pump up the nostalgia. And it's like goosebump indulging when 
he's in the ring and he's got the beady eyes staring at Kane and everyone's chanting the Undertaker. That was absolutely fantastic. The match wasn't good, but it was the, the moment of the Undertaker returning was great. And of course, the main event: Triple H defends the World Heavyweight Championship against Shawn Michaels and Stevie Richards. And this was, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best WrestleMania main events of all time. Stevie Richards defeats Triple H for the title. Okay, I I kid. It was not Stevie Richards. It was vacant. Vacant beat Triple H to win the World Heavyweight Title, and the title would go missing. To which Randy Orton would find later that summer same year. This and and it ended probably on a very happy note at the time before everything went down. And to see, let's get serious now. Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero in the ring with the confetti coming down. Two guys that nobody ever thought that would ever make it into the pinnacle of the business, hugging it out in the main event. At that time, was monumental. It was crazy. And yeah, that's probably why this is number five for me. It's despite what happened, it's it's still a moment that I look back when I was let's see, what when was this? March fourteenth, two thousand fourteen. So I wasn't even fifteen yet. Th- this was definitely a great show. So that's my number five. All right. And Kristen. Uh uh-uh. oh. Hopefully she didn't get cut off. Did we lose her? I don't know. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, there she is. Oh, she she has not been deported yet. Okay, great. Awesome. She has not yet been deleted. Delete. Delete. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I I was totally listening the whole time. Oh, okay. I I call lies. I know I'm mesmerizing, (laughs) but go ahead. Uh, My next WrestleMania is... My WrestleMania, next WrestleMania is WrestleMania 28. The first once-in-a-lifetime match, but it has nothing to do with that match at all. Does it? But it does doesn't. It, it doesn't. Uh, you know what I remember about this show, though? It wasn't even, like, the biggest things I remember weren't even, like, the really great matches about this show. Um, I remember we saw... Uh, Sheamus and Daniel Bryan and Daniel Bryan lost to Sheamus in 18 seconds Mm -hmm. and everybody was so pissed about it that we didn't even acknowledge Kane versus Randy Orton (laughs) the entire match I don't even think we acknowledge Big Show and Cody Rhodes either nope (laughs) Or Maria Menounos and who she? No, I think we were starting to come back during that match. Uh, oh, this is the Undertaker versus Triple H match with the Hell in a Cell. Correct. That uh, this one was the end of an era match. Right. That one was so good. It was such a good match. Uh, we had a fun match with uh, Team Johnny or Team Raw versus Team SmackDown or Team Tay Long. This is where um, this is where uh, Eve Torres, I think, kicked Zack Ryder in the balls. Oh, I thought it was the gut now, to... since we're PG. Is it the gut? No. Oh, sorry, in the gut. <laughs> in the gut. Go ahead. Um, we had uh, CM Punk versus Chris Jericho, which was a great match. And then, you know, we had the match that everybody wanted to see, except me, which was uh, The Rock versus John Cena. It's not that I didn't want to see it. I was just, like, not as enthusiastic as everyone else was. And it's probably because I didn't have the nostalgia about it. I wouldn't say it was a bad match. But I was like, okay, cool. And then it was lessened by the fact that the next year they would have it again. Twice in a lifetime. You know, twice in a lifetime. That's <clears throat> that's all I have to say about WrestleMania twenty eight. Interesting. 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 And, and say it while yeah. you feel bored. <laughs> you sound like I was you, about to say. You sound like Ben Stein at the moment. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. We're talking about WrestleMania as I saw. I'm sorry that mine <laughs> aren't as exciting as y'all's. Y'all's. 
<laughs> yes. I am from Texas. That's how we talk. That's right. Go ahead. Uh, my number four is WrestleMania 18. Where we got to see the likes of Rob Van Dam versus William Regal for the IC title match, which was a really good match, actually. Uh, DDP against Christian for the European title. Uh, if I remember correctly, that match wasn't like the best thing in the world, but it was good. Uh, Maven versus Goldust for the uh, hardcore title, which neither uh, person won because Spike Dudley came in and pinned Maven and won the hardcore title. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, then we got Kurt Angle versus Kane, which that actually was pretty decent. Uh, yeah, Undertaker, I like that match. Underrated. Undertaker versus Ric Flair Another in underrated. a no-Q match. Uh, Edge versus Booker T. Stone Cold versus Scott Hall with Kevin Nash. This was at the time I think that they were still that they were doing the new NWO gimmick in WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like that. Uh, I don't remember. I vaguely remember that. Yeah, part. It, oh, it was. Like it was storylines going on right then. Then we had the uh, four corners elimination match for the WWF Tag Team Championships. Uh, Billy and Chuck against the APA Bradshaw and Farouk Dudley Boys and uh, the Hardys. Uh, <clears throat> but the match that made this card. For me, wasn't even the main event. It was The Rock versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan. The build up for this match, the crowd so into this match is what made this match amazing. Because if you watch this match with the sound off, it's shit. <laughs> the Rock holds this match together completely 100%. However,. With sound on, everything going on, the match is amazing. Then we have a triple threat uh, women's match for the uh, women's title. It's Jazz versus Lita and Trish Stratus, with Jazz winning, which I believe that was... uh, They got a total of six minutes, so it was probably a good match. I know that's horrible. Sorry, Kristen. Uh... And then for the WWF Undisputed Championship, it was Triple H versus Chris Jericho, which that I do remember being a wonderful match. Uh, this was the sorry, third I'm ever- still stuck on six minute women's match. <laughs> it happens, as you know. <coughs> sorry, uh, I lost my train of thought. Jericho. Sorry. Uh, this yes, this was the third WrestleMania I ever got to actually watch, uh, and the next year for nineteen I completely missed it until I watched twenty, and then twenty from twenty I hadn't watched a Mania until twenty six. So this was a really good one for me because this was the year of what year was this? Two thousand two. Two thousand two. Yes, this was right after. This was a uh, a quite young Jordan or uh, Guapo. Uh, oh no, they know your name now. Oh no, what do I do? Well, uh, Guapo. This is a <laughs> young. Kayfabe is ruined. Young, hey, hey, is dead. Trump. <laughs> that's his a. That's his alias he uses to stay in the country. <laughs> yeah, Trump. You just it, you, here he is. I'm I'm giving him to you. Over the wall. Um, but my dad's white. That's Does, uh. That's doesn't matter. Your dad's your dad's kind of white. Kind of. No. So. <laughs> he's Cajun French. He's just uh, yes, dark. exactly. He's just darker. <laughs> uh, see, that won't matter to Trump. That's not gonna matter. Well. The fact <laughs> that he like sees your, your br- he's like your brown. That's all that matters. Exactly. <laughs> this is this is Kristen after three beers. You'll you'll say this whenever you see him next week, I guess. Right. Yeah, that he's got... brown? Huh? That he's brown? I would never say that to your dad. <laughs> your dad's that. really nice, but like with a tinge of scariness to him. <laughs> he's like super nice, but like you just get this feeling that he will murder you. Oh, that's right. I don't know why I get that from your dad. 
Because uh, he's never done anything rude to me ever. All right, can we keep the he's personal dead. lives out of the uh, the podcast? Yeah, no. Nope. Sorry. That ain't right. <laughs> Sorry. So. Go ahead, Guapo. Were you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go there. That's right. You're a mean person. Number four was uh, the WrestleMania held in Orlando. What is it? The Citrus Bowl? Yeah, Florida Citrus Bowl. WrestleMania 24. March 30th, 2008. Uh... A lot of people went into the show with very low expectations. Nobody really liked the build-up, and it really surpassed everyone's expectations. I remember I was with my friend Anthony. Uh, at this time, our tradition was he would come to my house to watch WrestleMania. Um, I had just started my job a month prior to this, so this was, I think, the first Mania I fought myself. Uh, Finley and JBL had a Belfast brawl to open the show. Which was... Oh, I remember that. That was surprisingly very fun. I liked it. Um, then we had my favorite Money in the Bank match, my personal favorite. Punk winning with Carlito, Chris Jericho, John Morrison, Mr. Kennedy, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin. And it was supposed to have Jeff Hardy, but he got busted for drugs and had a 60-day suspension. So he did not participate seeing, in this I'm match. I'm seeing a trend wow, what, here. I was about to say, wow, what a current topic. Yeah, exactly. Well, hold up. He... Uh, right now he got arrested for DUI with alcohol, so alcohol and drugs. I mean, whatever. That's totally not the same thing. I'm it's saying. not. If you abuse one, you totally don't abuse the other. Well, who the hell knows? I don't know the guy personally. For all I know, he he fucking has a sock puppet with him every night. I don't fucking know. Um... This is my favorite because Carlito was so close to winning, even though he had a no snowballs chance. I was super pissed when he had the fucking thing in his hand and somebody kicked him off. I was screaming at my TV, no! For those of you that don't know, Monoxide is a big Carlito fan. Oh, this was bullshit! Carlito should have won. Especially with what they did with CM Punk after this, but... I digress. I find that so amusing considering how much he bags on Primo. <laughs> Look, Carlito was at least relevant for a good part of his career there. He was on TV. So, anyways, Umaga and Batista had a no-nothing match. Kane destroyed Chavo, which was a mark-out moment because we, me and my friend Anthony felt Kane never got his due. And it almost looked like he got his due here. Then we had the career-threatening match, Ric Flair uh, versus Shawn Michaels. If Flair loses, he has to retire. This was absolutely fantastic for the storytelling. It's one of those matches where if you don't know the story, it's probably not going to resonate well with you, but Ric Flair gave a great performance for a man who at the time was near 60. And uh, it's hard to watch this match for one reason, and that is on the outside you see Charlotte, where she had short hair at the time, but you also see uh, David Flair and his other son, Reed, who unfortunately passed away five years after this at the age of 25. So it's it's very hard to watch Reed in the audience crying, and I could just imagine what Flair goes through when he sees that. So that's unfortunate. Playboy Bunny Mania, probably the best match of the night. Ashley and Maria versus Beth Phoenix and Melina. I think the story in this one was Santino didn't want Maria, like, doing all this Playboy stuff, and Maria was like, no, I'm going to do it anyways. And Snoop Dogg... It was a, it was a I can do whatever I want. Yeah, I do what I want! I do what I want! Oh, it was perfect. I love this. And Snoop Dogg made out with Maria at the end. Uh, the triple threat WWE title match, Randy Orton defends against John Cena and Triple H. I was shocked when Randy Orton won. I was rooting for Randy Orton, so was my friend Anthony. We thought he had no snowball's chance. It was either Triple H or John Cena, but Randy Orton won. That was fantastic. We marked out. Isn't that a weird day day and age when we're, like, rooting for Randy Orton to win? Well, I mean, he's going up against Triple H and John Cena. It's like if Randy Orton faced Roman Reigns. You're going to probably root for Randy Orton. So... Big Show and Floyd Mayweather Jr. had a no DQ match. This was a highly uh, built-up match, and it actually delivered for a celebrity match. 
I mean, you guys talk about Stephen Amell delivering a SummerSlam. Fucking Floyd Mayweather, say what you want about the guy. He delivered here. And this, the, it was a smoke and mirrors match, but he did his part. He, like uh, K-Fed, knew their weaknesses and hit them as much as possible and exploited their strengths. And they did a fantastic job. Floyd Mayweather did fantastic here. Um, and this was very fun. So I was shocked that this delivered. And the main event, Edge defending the World Heavyweight title against The Undertaker. This... I have a great memory of because this was a good match. It was one of those matches that it took a while to build. But there was one spot where after he hit a spear and Undertaker kicked out, Under or Edge hit another spear. And I literally thought that was it. That this has got to be it. Because he just hit him with a second spear. And he just like popped up and was getting ready to pin him. But then all of a sudden, the Undertaker hits him with a fucking go-go platter. Or the Hell's Gate or whatever he calls it. That I went nuts because I did not see that coming. That was a mark-out moment, and then Undertaker won, Undertaker being my favorite, winning the world title, bias. This was a great WrestleMania. This was a WrestleMania that exceeded everybody's expectations, so this is my number four. It's it's going to be the show that Ric Flair pseudo-retired, So, but it, it was a great WrestleMania for me, number four. Okay. Um, let's see. My next match, I think it's my number four. Oh, we're at three now. Number three. We're at three? Did I already talk yes. about WrestleMania 32? You did not. Yeah. Or did you? No. no, you did not. No, we're on number four. No, we're I haven't on three. talked about WrestleMania 2. Then, not, then you guys skip me at some point, because no. I haven't talked about WrestleMania no. 32, you, that's you my only, number four. You said you only had eight WrestleManias. I guess you have nine now, because you talked about 33. The one you missed, apparently. I guess I guess I did. <laughs> well, then I'll talk about two in a row. Sorry. That ain't right. Go uh, ahead. Let's see. Uh, I I have uh, WrestleMania 32 on here. This was the first WrestleMania I actually saw on pay-per-view. Because uh, I would only been to WrestleMania Live at that point. <laughs> Crazy. Right. That's right, right? No, WrestleMania 31 was the first WrestleMania I saw on pay-per-view. Sorry, yes. this was the WrestleMania with uh, where Undertaker faced Shane McMahon in the Hell in a Cell match. And they had a very good match. We had uh, the triple threat for the inaugural uh, Raw Women's, Women's Championship, not Divas, Women's Championship. We had... Uh, we had uh, Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles, which was a great match until, you know, the very end of it, when it didn't make any fucking sense for Chris Jericho to win. The one time um, we don't root for Jericho to win. Exactly. Well, because we were like, clearly AJ Styles is going to win. Like, this is a no-brainer. Uh, we This was when Zack Ryder won his first, uh, won the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania. I, I liked this WrestleMania. I, I don't have a whole lot to talk about it. It's in the middle. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and skip to my next one, since apparently I added a WrestleMania. Sorry about that. Yeah, you evil witch. It happens sometimes. I was trying to... I forgot that I went back and saw WrestleMania 33. Is this the I result of three beers? Yes. Yeah, it might be. Go ahead. I've had a rough week, guys. Okay. Uh, Monoxide talked about it a bit earlier. Uh, my number three is WrestleMania 26. And as I pull up the card to remember everything that happened on that show. <laughs> yes. Um. Like I said, uh, Monoxide talked about this a little earlier. We had uh, Jack Swagger winning Money in the Bank, which was completely out of nowhere. Uh, I liked Rey Mysterio versus CM Punk because I liked the whole storyline with him and the Straight Edge Society. Uh, I really liked Edge versus Jericho because how could you not like that match? And then, of course, the uh, the... Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker match, uh, career versus streak. It was Shawn Michaels' last match. I was uh, very sad to see Shawn Michaels go, but am happy that I got to see his last match. 
And it was such a great match, too. Storyline-wise, I think it made a lot more sense than the match before because they built it up for like a year where Shawn Michaels was desperately trying to get this rematch with The Undertaker, doing whatever he had to to get this match with The Undertaker. And so the story was a lot more compelling than the first match. Um, and yeah, I mean, Monoxide said a lot more about it than I did. But yeah, WrestleMania 26. All right. My number three. WrestleMania 26. Hmm. Oh, my God. Wow. What a co did. Look, I'm going to save us a little time. <laughs> Everything they said. Awesome. <laughs> That's true. There, we made up for the fact that I talked about two. Awesome. Yep. You're welcome. Okay, Sandow. So, <laughs> my number three is going to be shocking to some, but it is the... Best WrestleMania that I have ever seen live, and that is WrestleMania X X X Triple X Vandasex WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Yeah. So <clears throat> this was the best trip I ever have ever taken. You're welcome. Um, no, no thanks to you. I mean. I, I, I don't I don't like Guapo. I like that dude Jordan though. He's a good guy. Um, so I don't like Suave either, but Chris is a good guy too. Um, <laughs> this is breaking all the kayfabe, huh? Exactly. Yeah, so, Suave's an asshole. Chris is a good guy. Suave can be an asshole. That's right. Yes, this is true. Just like just like Monoxide can be a dickhead, but Steven's all right. Um, That's true. Well, hold up. This was the first <laughs> WrestleMania that we went to uh, the Hall of Fame. That's we right. I didn't. I didn't before. even. I wasn't even planning to go to the Hall of Fame. Uh, one of you guys had an extra ticket, and I guess I took it because fuck it. Jake Roberts was getting inducted, so I was like, "Fuck it, I'll go for Jake Roberts." Um, before the show even aired, um, or before we went to the show, I went to Fan Access or WrestleMania Access, and they used to do impression contests in the ring. And I decided to do Bad News Barrett, which you can find on this channel. It's uh in my uh, video log, and it was weird, let me try that again, it was weird because you had one guy doing The Rock, you had me doing Bad News Barrett, you had one guy doing Teddy Long, one guy doing Shawn Michaels, and one guy doing Randy Savage. One of these is not like the other, let's just say. Um, and I won the impression contest, and I won some dumb shirt, but it was a fun impression contest, and it really got me amped up for the show. I was already amped up for the show. Um, I said in a previous video, my markout moments, that this was the one show where everyone was bullish on, and then one episode where Daniel Bryan uh, took over Raw and got his uh, match to be where if he beat Triple H, he would get into the main event. Everybody was now excited for this. Um, I don't remember much about the WWE Tag Team title match, but I just remember it was pretty fun. The Usos defeated uh, Los Matadores, uh, the Real Americans, and Rybaxel. But I even remember it being kick-ass. Before the show had actual matches, first off, I love the intro to the show. I watch it every now and then. Um, but before the matches even started, we had an awesome segment with Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and Steve Austin. I think the Silver only... Dome! Yeah, the Silver Dome. That was awesome. And um, the only thing missing from this opener was Bruno San Martino and John Cena. I think because you've got five guys that were the guys, or may, and maybe throwing Bob Backlund in there, you basically have every single guy that was the face of the company at some point. So, anyways, we open up the show with, which is the second best opener in WrestleMania history, uh, Triple H and Daniel Bryan. Uh, this match was so kick-ass. Daniel Bryan won, no surprise to everybody, it was it was was what it was going to be. Daniel Bryan throughout the whole year was being held down, and they basically were saying it out front. It was it was a real life battle. It was a real life storyline happening. The Shield destroyed Kane and the New Age Outlaws. That was pretty fun. The this was the only Andre the Giant battle royal that I really enjoyed because it was the first, and we thought it was going to amount to something, which Cesaro won. 
And he won in the classic way possible at the 30th anniversary of WrestleMania by power slamming Big Show to the outside. I think somebody said the only thing that would have made this more prolific would have been if, um, oh, fuck, if Nick Hogan became a wrestler and he was the one to have done it. If he was the one to power slam Big Show onto the outside. That would have been the only way to have been more prolific. Um, the Bray Wyatt John Cena match, eh. The video package was absolutely fantastic for this. But the match itself, eh. Uh, this was the where the streak ended. Brock Lesnar being undertaken. The match may not be good, but this was some historical stuff that I will never be able to replicate in my life when it comes to witnessing. Um, this was the biggest shocking moment I've ever witnessed as a wrestling fan. So, uh, the best match of the night, the Vicky Guerrero Invitational Battle Royal, or, no, it wasn't a battle royal, it was just a match, uh, for the Divas title with AJ Lee defending against Oksana, Alicia Fox, Brie Bella, Cameron, Emma, Eva Marie, Layla, Naomi, Natalia, Nikki Bella, Rosa Mendez, Summer Rae, Tamina, Snuka. That is awesome. That is an awesome And then you didn't people. lose. Oh, it was perfect. I-, I wanted Eva Marie to win this one. I think it would have been so... I'm sure you did. That would have been fucking great to see the crowd burn this place down. <laughs> then, the main event, the WWE title match, Randy Orton defends against Daniel Bryan and Bautista. This was fantastic. I thought it was Bautista. That wasn't until uh, his last match, which was, I think, at Shrewing Wolves, when he did uh, the Evolution match. So, um... Here he was just Bautista. Uh, this is before he, uh, the movie came out, uh, the Avengers. Or what, no, is that right? No, not the Avengers. Guardians, Guardians. of the Galaxy. Same, same difference. Um, so Daniel Bryan won, and this was a great moment. Uh, There's a part. I was actually just watching this video earlier. Right after the match, Daniel Bryan goes up to Connor the Crusher, hugs him, says, "You mean a lot to me." Sadly. A few weeks after this WrestleMania, Connor sadly passed away. Uh, but it was a nice way to... T- I think the only thing that was missing was Brie Bella coming out to celebrate with Daniel Bryan. And if CM Punk would have still been with the company, and maybe him coming out. Yeah, and- there was a big uh, controversy about that, too. What, Brie Bella? About Brie Bella not coming out. Apparently she was told not to go out there because it was his moment or something. Well, it was weird because Nancy Benoit came out for Chris Benoit, even though it was it was when the um, the pay per view shut off. But there was a part on the after the show, Nancy Benoit and the whole family came out to celebrate with Chris. But I digress. This was a great WrestleMania. It was it was the Daniel Bryan show and uh, the Undertaker losing for the first time at WrestleMania. That's historical in and of itself. It, nothing's ever going to replicate that ever. Other than Bruno San Martino losing to Ivan Koloff. <clears throat> that's it. So number two. We're on to number two. Uh, number two uh, for me is WrestleMania 31. This one was the really? first WrestleMania I saw uh, on pay per view. You really like not this one? live. I did, but <sighs> not for. I did like this one. Uh, I do remember a few things like maybe you shouldn't do a res- an outdoor WrestleMania in Southern California if you want to do the Undertaker's entrance because then it's in still the middle of daylight. Or Bray Wyatt. Exactly. Remember the Scarecrows? Um, that, had the, that was weird during daylight, but go ahead. I, uh, I enjoyed the Triple H Sting match for what it was. Um it had all the all the things like DX came out. Um, who came out for Sting? Uh, NWO. NWO. The NWO. Um, let's see. We had uh, we had. This is where Rollins saved all of us from uh, from <laughs> from Roman Reigns' first real Universal or WWE Heavyweight Title reign. <coughs> By yes. cashing in his money in the bank. And really the match that kind of made Seth Rollins, the beginning of Seth Rollins, like, his beginning as a star. Because, you know, Seth Rollins is now a guy you can put in any match and it elevates the caliber of that match. Because Seth Rollins is not it. At least I think. 
Uh, Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker wasn't, you know, amazing. It was a pay-per-view to me that maybe wasn't. Uh, Daniel Bryan won the Intercontinental title match, uh, Intercontinental title uh, in a ladder match this WrestleMania. That was a good match. Uh, it was also one of his last one of his last matches before he then had to retire for the first time because mm-hmm. he's coming back at some point. I I liked this WrestleMania. Maybe it was because it was my first WrestleMania to watch with like a big group of people and not at the stadium. And we made it into like a big thing. We a friend of our or a friend of uh, Guapo and Suave's owns a card shop. And he let us go over there and like we set up a big TV, a big projector and everything. And we got food. People kept turning on the lights, which was not <laughs> good for the projector. In which we told them no. To which we sh- which we told them um, we're fucking paying to keep this place open. So fuck you kind of thing. Basically. Um. You know, I really like the match. Uh, a more personal story, though, that I want to share. Uh, probably the best part of the of the whole of that whole night was we have a buddy who is a who is a cop, <laughs> and he came in from right after work. And so, like, and he's not like a cop, like in the douchey way. Like, usually when he comes in from after work, he's like, "Can I go change?" He wants to immediately get out of his uniform. And everything. So he comes in, and he, we're in this like card shop. He comes in, and you can immediately tell who all the stoners were at the card shop because they see our buddy walk in, like, "Oh shit, the cops are here!" And then he walks over. He's like, "You guys have a restroom? I can change." Yeah, it's over there, buddy. <coughs> and we called him beforehand. I really wish we could have like made it a thing. <laughs> It would have been way better if we could have done that, because that would have been amazing. But yes. That's just a personal thing. I I enjoyed the pay-per-view. Maybe it was for not the reasons on the card. Maybe it was because we had a big group of people. We had... Wasn't this the beginning of the Brock Lesnar suplex? No, 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 no. The, The beginning of the Brock Lesnar suplex... Suplex bet was whenever I won the cha- won the uh, uh, Facebook page championship. That's true, but we did have it as a big first group time. here, and there was and we had a l- very large group of people here. Mm-hmm. We had like I don't know, like ten, fifteen people. Yeah, that was fun. And That's also, good. Seth Rollins saved us. No, yes. he didn't. Roman would have saved us. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Number two, everybody. Yeah, it's Guapo's turn. Number two was my very first WrestleMania live experience at WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans. My hometown got to witness WrestleMania firsthand for the first time. It was amazing. Uh, uh, I know you already touched on it there, uh, Monoxide, but... Just to run over the card a little bit again, with the Usos against uh, the Real Americans, da- Daniel Bryan beating Triple H, uh, which was fucking amazing for the first match. Uh, also, can we men- quickly mention how the women who Triple H walked out, or well, was rolled out onto his throne with, was Alexa Bliss, uh, Sasha Banks, and Charlotte Flair all now multiple-time women's champions. Uh, then we had the and Shield they were against... really excited about that, too. Yeah! Uh, then we had Shield versus uh, Kane and New Age Outlaws, which Suave missed completely because he went to go buy a beer. <laughs> uh, Cesaro... Yeah, a match you could miss. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh... Shield versus uh, Cesaro winning the Andre Giant Battle Royal was fucking amazing. Uh, I do remember, though, we got to see... No, it wasn't Hideo. It was uh, Bo Dallas, and there was somebody, another NXT person in it, though. I can't remember who. Uh, but it was our first time ever being on, being like on the main show for anything. Uh, 
John Cena, Bray Wyatt kind of bullshit. Especially the way it ended was some real stupid bullshit. Uh, Brock Lesnar, Paul Hain, Brock Lesnar, Undertaker losing the streak. I cannot tell everybody enough that you could literally hear a pin drop inside the Superdome. Mm -hmm. This was also where we got our phrase uh, pulling an Alex. (laughs) Yes, because our friend Alex uh, from over here, not by you, Monoxide, or where's Alex from? Actually, Uh, never mind. Whatever. You know what I mean? Our Alex got up and left. I Left. left with him. Yes, because you not do. Not because I was mad, but because I... Yeah. Because you're a better friend than most of us. Yeah, uh, you're a way better person <laughs> than most of us would have been. We would have been I like, didn't yeah, want him wandering yourself. around downtown New Orleans. I would have been like, good, go, fucking, go learn your own lesson of ba- paying for a ticket to a show, and then you want to leave, and then you wander around, and then something happens. I'm staying. I paid money for this shit. Yes. Anyway, uh, also, Anyways, if you watch, ba- if you watch, if you watch back this, uh, it's like almost instantaneous that there's an announcement and there's a graphic and everything. It wasn't. It was a good like, at least no, there was two, a long gap. two, three minutes before there was a graphic or anything it like, said. It was like the guys in the back <clears throat> didn't even know it was hap- What was it was going to happen? It's like they didn't even have the graphic ready or something. Yes. Uh, then we had AJ. Who did she make tap? I don't remember. Uh, who cares? I think it was in tap video for some reason. <laughs> who cares? It was still awesome. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and then, of course, Daniel Bryan, Batista, Randy Orton. When I'm pretty sure this is the match where Randy, like... He did the RKO to Daniel with Batista doing a Batista bomb to them to him on the table and Brandy landed on a monitor. Is that this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Which was a nasty looking spot, but Daniel being carted off and then making his way back to finish the match and win the ending with confetti, everything going on, it it, it made my it made my first mania experience amazing uh and extremely memorable like i i'll never forget the feeling i had for mania that night and that's why it's my number 2 because my last one is even better feeling than this okay my number 2 is a mania that is well renowned as the second best WrestleMania of all time behind 17, and that is WrestleMania 19 held in Safeco Field. Which, guess who sponsored this? WrestleMania. Snickers? Exactly. Snickers uh-huh. also sponsored Man, this. Man, Snickers has been a long time uh, yeah. brand. Man, somebody's like dying of hunger over there. <laughs> so. This was a great WrestleMania. This had John Cena's rap on Fabulous and Jay-Z, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. I think this was on the pre-show, though. Um, it opened up with Matt Hardy defending the Cruiserweight title against Rey Mysterio, which was a fine little match. Uh, the handicap match, Big Show and A-Train against Undertaker. This was nothing. It was supposed to be a tag team match. Undertaker was supposed to team with Nathan Jones. But Nathan Jones was so bad at his job that they took him out because he wasn't ready. Uh, Team Angle retained their tag team titles against uh, Benoit and Rhino and Los Guerreros. Uh, This is where this show becomes arguably a five main event show. Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels had a fantastic fucking match. It was absolutely one of the best. And this this was Shawn Michaels just coming back from his back injury. It was this was just great storytelling. Jericho wanted out of Shawn Michaels' shadow. It was just I love this match. Uh Booker T going up against the defending World Heavyweight Champion, Triple H. Other than the ending, this was a fine match, but the ending buried Booker T. That's only the crit- the only real criticism I have of this show. Mr. McMahon and Hulk Hogan had a fucking great street fight. I enjoyed the hell out of this. 
uh, with the inclusion of Roddy Piper coming back in and trying to screw over Hulk Hogan. This was a really good, well-done street fight uh, for two guys who, for lack of a better term, Hogan was near 50 and McMahon was near 60. So, And McMahon barely has any wrestling experience, and Hogan barely could wrestle a great match anyways. He wrestled Hulk Hogan style. Uh, Austin and Rock had an excellent match. It was the second best of the three WrestleMania matches, but it was still very good, and it was Austin's last hoorah. And it was, yeah, this was a very excellent match. And then you got Bro- uh, Kurt Angle defending the title against Brock Lesnar. And this was a very solid main event. It was like these five main events in a row, five main event caliber matches in a row. And I would say at least a good four out of five of them delivered. And it was a WrestleMania that just flowed very nicely. Oh, I forgot the women's match. Did I mention the women's match? Yeah, Trish Stratus defeating... Nope. Uh, yeah, Trish Stratus defeated Victoria and Jazz. I completely forgot about that. Oh, and there was some sort of bunny pillow fight with Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler with the uh, Budweiser girls. But whatever. Um, but this was a solid WrestleMania. Like, there's very little bad you can find out of this show. So it's my number two, just how well it flows. That's a good one. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number, number one. We've talked, uh, my number one we've talked about a couple times already. Uh, WrestleMania 30. I really liked WrestleMania 30. Granted, I had to go back and watch probably one of the best matches of the night because I am a chump. My friends would say I'm too good of a friend. I would call myself a chump at that point. There's yeah. other things that would right. <clears throat> There's other things I would call you, but I'll do that offline. I already know what you're going to say. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I mean, what else is there to say about this pay-per-view? It was a great pay-per-view. It, it had its flaws, but I think it was a great pay-per-view. Um, I was terrified because I was terrified about this pay-per-view because wasn't this pay-per-view after the power shut down at the Super Bowl? Or was this before that? No, it was after. Yes, after. So I was kind of terrified that the lights were going to go out at some point. Um, And, I mean, we got our Dan. We got, everybody got the Daniel Bryan ending that they wanted. I don't have anything else to add. What what they said. There we go. Just listen to us. Don't listen to her, fucker. Just listen to us. (laughs) <laughs> all right <clears throat> my number one wrestlemania favorite wrestlemania is wrestlemania 20 that is right wrestlemania 20 uh like you said earlier Minoxa, when you talked about it uh i was also a huge john cena fan at the time because i was a fan of the Dr. Thugonomics and him winning that t- him win- winning uh, his first uh, major title and it was uh, really great to see finally. And uh, Christian and Jericho brought the ha- uh, had an amazing match. I thought uh, loved loved the Evolution Rock and Sock Connection match. Uh, I actually enjoyed the cruiserweight match, but I was also a huge uh, Ultimo Dragon Mark at that time. Uh, I don't exactly feel like talking about Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar because that makes my brain hurt every time I think about it. How? Uh, this was a classic. Exactly. Uh, the Eddie Guerrero Kurt Angle match sold the entire show. Uh. Of course, uh, Undertaker Kane, but I was also a massive Undertaker fan, and him coming back and fighting Kane for Brother versus Brother 2 was uh, perfect. They couldn't have built that. They could not have built that match any better. And then uh, I was also a huge Chris Benoit fan, so having him c- overcome the odds against Triple H and Shawn Michaels and make. Uh, I'm pretty sure he made Triple H. Submit to the Crypto Cross face, yes, if I remember right. Yes. Uh, and then the uh, the ending with him and Eddie in the ring celebrating 
uh, I could not have pictured a better ending for a mania than that. That that was a picture perfect moment, only to be spoiled by what would happen later in the future. But I can I can separate what he what he did outside the ring with what he did inside the ring, and what he did inside the ring was a he was an amazing storyteller and an amazing wrestler. Okay. My number one is going to shock most people. Maybe not, depending on who you are. My favorite WrestleMania of all time is WrestleMania X-Rated. WrestleMania 14 at the Fleet Center in Boston. Also known as the WrestleMania where the Austin era began. Um, actually, Even though it has a stupid name. It has a stupid name, yes. but um, Sorry. This is... In fact, as of this recording, this WrestleMania happened 20 years ago. We are recording this March 29th. This, so, as of today, this WrestleMania was 20 years ago. Um, yeah. I remember I went to a birthday party earlier in the day uh, for a friend at a, the ice skate rink. And I remember we were playing the arcade. I think Mortal Kombat 4 had just come out. And so uh, we went to the ice skate rink, had a good time. Uh Came back after playing Mortal Kombat and going ice skating or whatever. Or no, it was a rollerblade rink. I, I don't even remember. But it was a birthday party. And um, came back to watch WrestleMania. And uh, there was the pre-show, which was basically just hyping up the show. There wasn't really any matches. Um, that was really fun. But you got LOD coming back to win the Battle Royal to determine the number one contender for the WWF Tag Team titles by... <laughs> Eliminating the new Midnight Express, which were known as the Bodacious Bart and the Bombastic Bob. Um, also known as uh, Bart Gun and Sparky Plug. Uh, the the WWF Light Heavyweight Title Match, Takamichi Noku defending against Aguila, who would eventually become S.A. Rios. They had a fun little match. It was, it was fine. It wasn't long, though. I think this is an underrated match. The European title match, Triple H defending against Owen Hart. The storyline here was they were trying to come up with ways so that China couldn't get involved, and in this pay-per-view, they had her handcuffed to Sergeant Slaughter, and she found a way to get out of it by throwing powder in his face, So, and Triple H was able to cheat. The mixed tag match, the artist formerly known as Goldust and Luna Vachon versus Mark Maron and Sable. This was around the time Goldust became uh, Luna's gimp slave. I'm not even shitting you. That was the gimmick. He was a gimp slave for Luna. Uh... They had a Smoke and Mirrors match, which was fun. I thought it was really good, although the story afterwards behind the scenes seemed shitty, uh, according to Gangrel, who was married to Luna at the time. Uh, the Rock defended the Intercontinental title against Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock won via tap out, but then it was overturned because he just wouldn't let go of the ankle lock on The Rock, and everybody came out to stop him, and he just attacked everybody, and they made Ken Shamrock like a compl- look like a complete badass in this match. And this whole entire show, he just whooped everyone's ass. It was at this point, I thought, there's money to be made with Shamrock and Austin, but they never really made a program out of it. <laughs> then came um, the New Age Outlaws defending the tag team titles against Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie, also known as Terry Funk. Uh, this was before the New Age Outlaws became part of DX. This was a really fun match. I enjoyed the ever-loving hell out of this. Um... The, I have a bias for this next match, Kane and Undertaker. I love the story going into it. They built Kane for months coming in, and he finally debuted at Hell in a Cell. Um, I can go on and on about the story, but suffice to say, Undertaker didn't want to fight Kane because that's his brother, and he basically made it so that Undertaker had no choice but to face him. So they had this match. People have mixed opinions. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people hate it. I loved it. It's a match that I've watched over and over again as a kid. My mouth was literally on the floor watching this. And I think this was the perfect way to keep Kane as a monster and lose. Because Undertaker did the tombstone three times on him. Because the first two times he kept kicking out. And even the third one he kicked out somewhat, but it was too late. And Kane beat the shit out of Undertaker and then walked away. So Kane still looked like a monster afterwards. They built Kane perfectly in the show without winning and the best part of this was when he tombstone pete rose after pete rose was trying to gain heat for insulting boston and how 
Uh, they failed against, I guess he was with the Cincinnati Reds at the time in the World Series. Then the main event, Shawn Michaels defends the WWF title against Steve Austin. This was Shawn Michaels' last match for four years. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention, Mike Tyson is the enforcer. This is what sold the mania, Mike Tyson being the celebrity involved in this match. Uh, Shawn Michaels had a bad back. He actually had not wrestled a match since Royal Rumble where he got hurt against The Undertaker in the casket match. There's no, he didn't even wrestle house shows. He didn't wrestle on Raw. He didn't wrestle at all. From Royal Rumble to this show. He was but unlike Brock Lesnar, he was there. So they had this match. It wasn't the best Shawn Michaels match, but it was the beginning of the Austin era. Me being a huge Steve Austin fan, this was a huge mark out moment. This is the Steve Austin show, and this was basically um the bigger jump start of the Attitude Era, though people debate when the Attitude Era started. I believe it was Steve Austin's uh 316 promo, King of the Ring ninety six. That's just personally. But this was the show they finally coronated Steve Austin as the guy. And that's why I love this show. And Mike Tyson coming in and, and punching Shawn Michaels out. And this possibly being Shawn Michaels' last match. It was it was a great show. For me, at least. And it's my favorite show for the Steve Austin thing. The Undertaker and Kane storyline coming to uh, a climax. The, uh, whatchamacallit, the dumpster match being fun. Uh, Ken Shamrock kicking so much ass, and Triple H Owen Hart having a decent match, and LOD returning. I couldn't ask for anything better. Okay. So that's that's WrestleMania. Twenty eight of our twenty nine of our favorite WrestleManias. Come on, slip in one more that you may have missed. Make it an even. 30. I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I didn't miss one. Okay, she she likes WrestleMania nine. Everybody. Hulk Hogan winning, winning the title from Yokozuna in 30 seconds after he beat Bret Hart. Fantastic. Crush and doink involving two doinks. Giant Gonzalez Undertaker. I'm talking for you. Just go with it. This this is why you got to be psychopathic. The psychopathic one. You like psychopathic. One. Psychopathic. I forgot what I called you in the uh, in It the sounds beginning. like I control psychopaths. Something. Psychopathic. Why not? You can't control psychopaths? I control, I control psychopaths with my mind. Why not? It's, it, this, is, this is an avenue you can go with. So, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, that was, that was a lot of WrestleMania talk right before WrestleMania. Yep, and the next time you will be seeing Squared Circle Breakdown, it will be in video form reviewing WrestleMania 34 after Woo! it has happened. Wow, we are in our cosplay outfits for the day. Uh, we will just have to find a location to record. It'll probably be in my hotel room, but yes. Wait, I thought I was wearing Ow. my cosplay earlier. I may yeah. not be in cosplay. Well, then you suck. Fine, I'll fucking bring it. There you go, perfect! Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 it's... Yeah! Uh, Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of Squared Circle Breakdown. Like I said, next time you see us, we'll be in video form. And we will be Woo! reviewing WrestleMania 34. I don't know how fucked up you guys will be when it comes I'll to I'll probably you. be really fucked up. Okay, great. Yes. That'll make it better. I'm going to have to get stoned or something. Although, I'll probably laugh like hysterically throughout the whole thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this long, long episode. So... See you at the biggest show, the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania! Adios, amigos.